it's we're all hot under the collar of this <laughs> Kyle Rittenhouse thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm gonna say this, and I don't say it a lot. I'm almost at a loss for words mm -hmm. <laughs> as to what the outcome was. I I was really thinking he was gonna get something. Mm -hmm. And I feel like more than anything else, we're at a point where I should have, of course, not have thought that. You know what I mean? We're, we're at such a lawless moment in American history that of course he would be looked at as like, this is, you know, send this guy back out into the streets, justified. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, it's the reason why I'm so like overwhelmed by it is because the after effect of him being called a hero now mm -hmm. on the same level as somebody like Ashley Babbitt, who is far from a hero, you know, mm -hmm. you can go where we're, you can be in the army and, and not be a hero, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? In mm -hmm. terms of how you act when you come back into, you know, mm -hmm. civilian life. And I, I feel like the after effect of him being innocent of these crimes is going to be worse than the actual him killing two people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, because I lived in New York during the Bernard Getz, you know, the vigilante shoot sure. in uh, the subways. Remember that whole thing? I do. Actually, I do remember it very, very well. And I, I uh, mean, it's kind of uh, you brought up something I hadn't thought about in a long time, actually. Right. Because. The vigilante thing, they don't even remember they used to make a lot of movies about vigilante. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, that yeah. kind of just went away by the wayside because everything's superhero bullshit in spandex, you know? Mm -hmm. But I have a feeling we're going to have a return to the good old fashioned dungaree vigilantes. <laughs> I hope not. I, I, I personally, I, I, you know, obviously, I think you and I, and I say obviously for the viewers on this is your show, by the way. I'm 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 being I'm your guest today. This is great. Yes. Um, but thank you. And uh, you know, I want to say that uh, you know, our relationship uh, that you and I have uh, fostered has been based on a respectful dialogue of typically disagreeing, right? So, but our country is so divided, Abe. It's just it's concerning to me. You know, people are gonna die this weekend uh, because of this verdict. Oh, and you know, when you I look at that, you, you yeah. look at the root of really uh, where things started. And, you know, listen, I understand why he was charged. I also understand that I don't have the same opinion you do. Uh, but I also think that a fair trial needs to be for everybody, every American, it doesn't matter your color, your skin. And, and that's really the root of the issue that seems to be stimulating this, this divided country. But I also look at when a president of the United States sits and makes a judgment like, this is a white nationalist, this is the white supremacist move. It didn't set the tone uh, for the country uh, when that happened with Joe Biden uh, making those comments early on on the campaign. So it's interesting, you know, we could look at pointing blame. I can I can blame CNN. I can blame all these different news oh, outlets. I'm right up there with the CNN and I can't yeah. stand those people. And They're MSNBC just trying to divide too. us. They're trying to divide us. And I, I'm, I'm tired of it. You know what? We're going to need a new uh, platform to resolve our issues in our country because all the current ones aren't working, right? So uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to enjoy anything that's given us an opportunity to, to fix yeah. what we're broken with. Yeah. I mean, today was the day I'm supposed to launch my question. They yep. just like, oh, you're ready to do it. And I did it last night. I did a soft launch yesterday and I said, mm -hmm. today the internet's going to only be about Kyle Rittenhouse. You do not want to get lost in that sauce. You're better off mm -hmm. just like, We'll do a push next week once the mm -hmm. dust settles. But this weekend, it's going to be venting and responses and, mm -hmm. you know, marches and whatever. Anyway. Right. Right. So how's uh, how's biz? How, how's uh, the podcast doing? Yeah. Yeah. It is a business, actually. So it's uh, the business and the podcast are going well, uh, doing some uh, joint projects. I was actually down in South Carolina uh, with Rebel Nation out of North Carolina, uh, Pete uh, Rivera, who's the owner, uh, myself and my new partner in one of my projects is AB Money. He, I don't know if you know him, but he's a, a producer from uh, actually New York. You might have remembered him from the days he was with Wu-Tang and mm -hmm. uh, Miles Davis, actually. He's done 25 platinum albums. And uh, so we came up with a, a concept for a, a, another project, which is going to be Odd Couple, The Odd Couples. 
And the odd couple is uh, AB and I sitting down doing like we're, we're doing uh, uh, with industry people. He's got a connection with uh, Big Daddy Kane and, and you go down the long list of people he's worked with. And I don't want to get a name dropping, but the, the, the goal of that project really, uh, Abe, is to, to do what we're doing, but to also get how uh, the influencers actually are, are, are really uh, impacting uh, the nation and, and, and what they say, right? I mean, if it's anything from the Kyle uh, Rittenhouse case, or if it's maybe to, um, you know, uh, any, any one of the topics, immigration, and how that affects us. And we're going to try to cram it into 12 one-hour episodes starting in January. Cool. And uh, we're, we're excited. So uh, that's one project and things are moving forward though. Having a great time. So the goal with me, I'm turning, I'm expanding my, just my YouTube channel to add podcasts. So I'm just building a bunch of, ser a bunch of, um, you know, episodes now to yeah. kind of launch it, soft launch it through Christmas, but in January, like officially trying oh, to push it. And, um, but the idea for me is, of course, the message won't be silent to keep right. that going, to really talk about all the issues. The thing I want to talk to you about today is like, what do you really think as a devout Republican, what <laughs> issues do they really stand for? I mean, yes, they want to tear down Build Back Better. And believe me, I think a lot of money that this government pisses away, I'm not in a blanket support of either, you know? Yeah. But the bridges and roads thing, how do you, how do you, how can you tell me what you stand for or what the platform, not you, you, mm -hmm. what the GOP stands for with roads and bridges when they never came out with an alternative? Mm -hmm. to the uh just even to the infrastructure plan they just want it flat out no you know uh, you bring up a really kind of interesting and i put a little time and thought into this and as a former legislator in connecticut i voted on some pretty massive bills and one of the things you learn quickly when you're in the legislative make you know process is uh you know what's in the, in, in the, the sausage or whatever you want to call it in the making uh there's a lot of rat's tails and i think when you look at a bill this massively sized you you just kind of point out we see so many uh, uh opportunities to tag in a and I call them a rat's tail to to provide money for this and provide money for that if it's strictly going to be infrastructure look I'm an economic, you know, the economy is going to drive our success in our country. And if we don't have highways and ways to transport our goods and services, we're going to be in the situation we're in right now, where we are seeing ships off the sea, not with the ability to get these this into the supply chain. We need to fix the problem. But when I hear Pete, Mayor Pete, uh, I don't want to be critical of Mayor Pete because I actually like him. I have been a huge fan. The two things I'm critical of him for is that uh, when he wanted to take his time off for his 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 baby, you know, care and be honest with you, I, I'm all for you know that that's I'm I'm proud that he's a father and takes pride in that. But I think at the crucial time when our supply chain is almost done and you're going to push out Mayor Pete, uh, this need for the money for this, that's not the time to check out. You need to be there. And the fact that he called this a racial this infrastructure, he tied it into racial divides. Now I want to ask you, I'll, I'll throw it back to you. And by the way, I'm not just a crazy Republican. I mean, you can label me all you want, but I am. I'm a I'm a conservative libertarian, and I think in I think in more thoughts, I, I'm really more uh, to people's rights. But I think when you look at the situation, how can you actually uh, tie in race into the infrastructure bill? Well, the, the the point was, well, bridges were designed a certain way to create barriers. Well, those bridges were designed by city leadership mostly Democrat over the history of this country. So it's really hard for me to got, dive into that and say, well, that really doesn't make sense to me, but I'm going to take it with a grain of salt. I'm going to say, okay, let's think even further. Well, how many more billions and trillions of dollars have been given to infrastructure improvement over the years? It never went there, never went there by Republicans and Democrats. So we're paying the penance for that. And that's a I, problem. Look, I agree. I agree. I, I question Look, just that thing that came out today, I remember when Jared Kushner gave his college roommate $100 million for COVID infrastructure support, whatever. Mm -hmm. So it turns out out of that $100 million, mm -hmm. nothing was allocated, but he managed to personally spend a million dollars since last year. Now, where's that $99 million? 
100 right. million, 9,900, whatever. You know what I mean? It's like, where is that? And there is so much money that we know did not get allocated from the original COVID release package. Mm -hmm. Forget about the one that Biden did. The first mm -hmm. one where there was small businesses and never got it, where like people like, you know, Elon Musk managed to get his 5 million. But, you know, my sister who has like a kid's clothing company in like in New Jersey is still waiting for like whatever, you know what I mean? So I just kind of feel like I, I, I don't trust our government either. And yeah, I'm a Democrat-ish lately. I don't even know, you know what I mean? I'm leaning into right. just kind of, if we don't catch like fire for 22, I am like totally going to be an independent. That which is more of a personal thing to do as mm -hmm. opposed to like, nobody gives a shit what I do. Right. Right. But um, yeah, I just, I don't understand how you can vote against it. It's not like they said, we, it's not that Republicans came out with the, okay, rather than do 1.2 trillion, here's mm -hmm. 800 billion towards mm -hmm. that. And this 400, let's keep in a kitty and then if it, you need it, whatever, you know what I mean? I mean, I personally, I'm an event producer by trade. Where is the Excel spreadsheet of where every dollar is going to go that you have? Here's the act. Here's your budget. Here's what's spent. And here's the actual. And here's what's left. Did you go over budget or did you stay within budget? None of that's available. I looked on the websites. I went to the White House and whatever. And it's all very vague but you still have to kind of fix roads. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Republicans were in control for years with Trump and nothing happened. Like yeah, that's right. like, that's like egg on your face. Well, I, 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 it's interesting. And I, I think I would have a different perspective on even from the beginning of what the alternative solution would be for the Republican party. I think you look at the bill making process and during this process, um, you know, unfortunately, we're in a po politically divided country where you choose a side. And unfortunately, you know, the congressional people in Washington, D.C., they walk to their aisles and they stay on those sides and they, they, they're they disciplined and they are going to they're going to say what the party tells them to say. And quite honestly, uh, I think that if we had more people that were able to have the conversation, even when they disagree, we could solve the problem. Yeah, let's let's do it this way. Why don't we do this budget in piecemeal? Why don't we say we can accomplish this goal? Six out of 10 rule, right? There's six out of 10 things we can agree on. Why don't we work on those six things and we'll come back to those other four things and we'll try to work on it. We don't see that in government because it's always about the one chance to get what you want. Right. And they're, they're yeah. trained professional employees of, of the taxpayers, meaning government employees, those appointed folks that get voted in rather, uh, and they know how to do it. They're going to go for the gusto and win the Super Bowl because they don't care about playing the game or the scrimmage game and working towards it. They care about the wins. And it's sad because it really, it, it affects us as just the regular average everyday American. Yeah, because we're kept out of the real loop of what's the truth. And that's exactly. where this mistrust of government comes in from me, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm agreeing with you is 100%. Uh, it doesn't matter if I don't trust Democrats and you don't trust Republicans. We don't trust government. No, no, no. But see, but this conversation needs to happen on a daily basis somewhere because we're not uh -huh. getting it on Fox. We're not getting on MS, MSNBC. We're not getting it on, you know, the other two, OANN and Newsmax or on CNN. And that's why the goal for me, for what I want to do is very mm -hmm. much along the lines of having the conversation with what's at least realistic. I mean, right. part of the things like I, because I am a Democrat in the meanwhile, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to have conversations with the DNC. I don't yeah. understand what they do for a living. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what Jamie Harrison's role in they're they're mar they're mar you know what hey listen at that level they're marketing people that what they do is they market to their 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 root I mean that's they're they're really worried about what's the next campaign going to be that's fundraising that's marketing to those people that are going to support them and it's also helping create that the 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 energy to keep their causes you know vibrant and, and in the news um, and that's on both sides. <laughs> and as I said, I don't know what they do for a living. Yeah, all right. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, I don't know what they do. Either. Because here's a perfect example. And I, 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 first of all, I can't imagine you like Kevin McCarthy, but don't tell me if you do. 
But like that guy needs. I'm, I think I'm going to interview Kevin McCarthy soon. Actually, I'm, I'm working on uh, trying to get him in for an interview or, or at least uh, honor an interview. Uh, do I like him? I don't know him, but I do like his policies. I mean, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I, I, you I kind of read it. It resonates to me. Okay. He needs to be replaced. So I'm. I'm why, making... why don't you? Wait, well, let me ask you. Let me. I know this is your show, and you're interviewing me. But why would you? Why don't you like him? I hate ass kissers, okay. and he literally smooched up to that orange piece of shit. And I will never. My favorite president, by the way, you're talking about. Oh, I'm saying that. yeah. My favorite president. I know this is where we are so never going to be on the same team. Oh, <laughs> uh, probably not, but that's okay. This is what uh, you know the efforts for which I think uh, you're doing with your show and this launching of this concept and and the things I attempt to do uh, are really going to pay off in the long run. We got to keep talking, like you said. Yeah, no, I want to have conversations with my own team, with your own team, with everyone's yep. team. I mean, you know, you can't. You can't, we're not going to. We're. Either that or where I refuse to be, and I don't know what your position is on this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I refuse to be part of a fascist regime. And no, that is the problem with the Trump you, mindset. Your favorite and, and you, president yeah. will, left to his own devices yeah. is very fascistic. And yet that's not mm -hmm. gonna be good for you either, honey. It just ain't. <laughs> Well, 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 thank you, honey. But let me let me say this to you. I, I feel I think we could take that and I could I could, you know, I could uh, probably volley back and say, well, I feel like this administration currently is acting in that same way. And I think there's enough evidence that I could put on the table and say, well, this is why I feel the way I do under this current administration. We could say it under previous administrations. Fascism is something that we should all be aware of. Uh, history should tell us some warning shots. We've seen what uh, power can be greatly accomplished in five years uh, or so. Uh, you know, Hitler didn't go from a, a cell in Austria to, to his position of power uh, overnight, but he did it fairly quickly in a short fairly amount of time. Quickly. So we need without to social it. without social media. Yeah, imagine if he had social media. That's a really, you know what? That that is a movie to be made. Imagine if you could take the movie of Hitler and then put in the current media and actually have it play out like in real, you know, like a real time story. That would be world domination. Well, really it, think about it. It, 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 it. It's kind of with us as we speak. Just roll yeah. the cameras, honey. <laughs> yeah, I, I I agree. I mean, it's it's happening. Uh, and again, you know, I, I was just down in South Carolina, like I mentioned. And one of the interesting parts when I was down there. And my entire group of people were all black men, black males, my age. I was the one token white guy that day. I, I happened to get the, the, the winning ticket and it was great. I had a great time, but we went into certain places. I would go into bars and restaurants and we enjoyed ourselves. We were doing a lot of filming. And one of the things I noticed is honestly, no one looked different to me. No one acted different in, the, in that. And you think South Carolina, deep root, but in, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, more of a vacation spot, multicultural. I felt so comfortable with everyone I was with. But then I could come back to, you know, I went to Baltimore Airport and I could see differences that were distinctly different in people's attitudes. And the country itself, Abe, you know, you're in California, I'm in Connecticut here on the West Coast or East Coast, West Coast, and we're distinctly different in our philosophical positions on politics. But think about our economics that drive the difference. I mean, I, I look in some people's eyes, especially the viewers of your show, it looks like some kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know, patriot. Of course, a patriot now means white supremacist racist. I look like a trailer park trash guy. Well, I did grow up in a trailer. I look like a NASCAR fan and I drink, uh, you know, Bush beer and I do. But uh, I mean, those things shouldn't be the things we view each other as. We should just be Americans with different points of view. Tell me like a minute or two's worth of how you see what the Biden administration has done that you disagree with? Well, uh, you know, what? Here, here's the first thing I'm going to say. I, I know that a lot of things are said about Joe Biden, his uh, 50 plus, almost 50 years, if not 50 years uh, in, in office. I mean, I had the pleasure of speaking to uh, a Serbian woman who talked about the attacks in 99 and Joe Biden himself being the chair of foreign affairs, he had a direct uh, effect on, on those people. In fact, uh, you know, there's lots of history where 
we see some things like uh, Joe Biden's been involved with the law that, uh, you know, three strikes and you're out law, the incarcerated more black males in the country because of laws he passed. He's since admitted, you know, those things. And but I, I find it irony. The irony in Joe Biden is he has a quick way of forgetting his past. Right. It's like I'm a politician and I'm here now and I'm fighting for the people. And I believe he means what he says. But I also believe that you can't shake you know, you can't shake that tail that you've been wearing your whole life. And so I find him disingenuous when it comes to policies that he wants to push forward. Uh, I don't think he agrees with AOC. I don't think he has a real warm, fuzzy relationship with, with the, you know, the socialist side of the House in the Democratic Party. And I do think he plays a little bit to those heartstrings. But what you're seeing currently out of this administration isn't surprising. It's Barack Obama's third term. And to me, this is what we have. Barack Obama's policies seem to be just escalating towards a, a further, uh, you know, uh, execution on his policies. And that's what I think. I wish he would have been more of an independent president and, and, and really written his own um, sort of legacy. But I see this just being, in my own opinion, I'll just say it's just another term for Barack Obama. And by the way, I've always said Bear Grylls, when he took Barack Obama out to go in the, you know, the, out in the forest or whatever, and they're drinking pee and all that stuff in the show. I was like, dude, I want to hang out with that guy. I like Barack Obama, the person. His policies suck, quite honestly. So does in Biden's. They suck. <laughs> but then again, giving a tax break to the rich, which was what the big thrill that Trump did. How did you benefit from that? Are you on, are you on the one percent? Oh no, no, no. I'm below the. Uh, I'm below. I'm I'm on the lowest end of the one percent on the other side of of benefit. <laughs> but you know what? You, you you bring that up on Trump, and you talk about what did he do, and you hear the racial divide, and a lot of people want to paint a picture. Um, you, you echoed some of these thoughts, but the orange man bad because he was racially dividing our country. Actually, President Donald Trump took the uh, the Black Historic College program and brought it in and said, let's do a 10 year window of funding so you know what you have every year for funding for this first time ever. More incarcerated Black men were released during the Trump administration than ever. And he grew, he garnered more than 13, 13% of our population being that of Black American. Uh, Black Americans voted in the highest numbers for him over any other president ever. That, that speaks to something that people on corporate media don't want to share, but it's fact. It's also marketing because the, <laughs> RN, the RNC is far better at it than the, G, than the DNC. Mm -hmm. And they were managed to convince, you know, listen, it took one rapper to get a hang, you know, to hang out at the White House mm -hmm. to get a whole slew of otherwise like non-voting, you know, African Americans mm -hmm. to think, oh, okay, I'll go vote for, mm -hmm. you know, Kanye's choice, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just I just, I, I, okay, we're never going to agree on this. One. No, no, but it's, it's okay. I think the conversation to me, if, I, if you don't mind me adding this to it, again, one of, one of my benefits is, is talking to somebody like yourself, Abe, and other folks that have different opinions. You know, the biggest population of pushback in the COVID conversation under this administration has been the Black community. The Black community does not trust government. They don't trust government. They don't want the vaccination. They don't want to take a what's, what should be called a flu shot, in my opinion, and, and, and take the boosters. They don't trust government. But yet we don't hear that. We hear the biggest pushback is from the white freedom wanting, you know, when you don't have a right to freedom, I think Biden said, or whatever it was. And so I think this divide just keeps on continuing to happen. Yes, marketing on both sides create it. But we fall victim to it. We allow ourselves emotionally to connect with one side or the other. And I think we need to, you know what, maybe we'll just start our own party and just leave all this nonsense behind you. I mean, I just really think that there's a combination. I think, I said this on a post a while back, I think yep. all those never Trumpers yep. should have automatically started bolstering and building out the independent party because it's never been a strong party. It comes from a good place. It will allow Democrats and Republicans to come together and at least come up with the platform that isn't this far left, that mm -hmm. isn't that far right, that doesn't have those lunatic fringe people. I don't care how conservative you are. There is no way you are on the same page with those people that are acting violent at school board meetings. You can't. I don't care whether you disagree or you don't have that vial, you're not vaccinated. I don't even want to know. The mm -hmm. point is, 
confronting kids and their mothers when they're going to school, if they decide that they want a vaccine, mm -hmm. those people are not in a party I, you, I would ever want to be in. And I would like to think you wouldn't want to be in. The same way I wouldn't want to be in a party with a bunch of hyper-Orthodox Jews that are like crazed with their own you know, bullshit too. I mean, there's extremes on both sides mm -hmm. that I would think there's got to, look, if we were in any other country, we'd have a parliamentary and there would be like 10 different things you could be fighting mm -hmm. for. So mm -hmm. we're stuck in a system that really is not a work. It doesn't work. This is where I, 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 think I, would, I, would, I would I would respectfully disagree. The democracy we have, I think, is the one that the, every nation seeks. Uh, that's why people are coming here. You know, two million illegal immigrants estimated coming into the United States this year. But you think about honestly what you just said really strikes a chord with me because um, you know you talk about the school board meetings, and yet we had the same situation happening during George Floyd. We saw riots in our streets and and people being killed and property being destroyed and violence. Yet there seems to be a pass given to that versus the people that want to fight for the rights to raise their own children. I just, I, I have a hard time understanding how one can go, not be uh, compared to the other. I didn't give a pass to violence and burning down. That was- No, I'm not saying up. you did. I'm just saying in general, in the, in the corporate well, anybody that not. Anyone that supported that violence is a yeah. jerk. Anyone, mm -hmm. period. I don't care in the name of what, you know what I mean? That was not freedom. One of the things that resonates to me on fixing- politics in our country term limits term oh, limits man. definitely and I'm, 70 and 72 years old goodbye yeah i mean i mean i'm, I'm you know i, I listen <laughs> we we all should want really the best quality person in these seats but we shouldn't want the best quality person in there forever because that doesn't do anything for anybody. All it does is set them, uh, set them very comfortably in a position where they, you know, when I was a state in the state house, I was told right out of the box, you're never going to get a law passed. So make sure you're working on your next term or the term after, especially me in a blue state being a Republican. And so I said, all right, screw it. Then I'll just put a bunch of laws out, which I thought were passionately right. Not one of them saw the light of day. Right. Now, one law, because you can't be a part of that system unless you earn your right within the parties. And by the way, that's Republican and Democrat, both term limits fixes, my opinion, the country's future. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, like, there's no reason for a, like a Mitch McConnell. And I mean, there's just so many of them. They're like, they're just keeling over Dianne Feinstein. I mean, it's yeah. not just in the Democrat Republicans. Mm -hmm. It's they're all old and gross, and it's time to like mix it up anyway. <laughs> Listen, I, I I think 2022, to your point you made earlier, is going to be definitely one of those those really really big years in the history of this country. And uh, it, never a midterm I think has made uh, so many people more aware of politics. I think that's what's happening right now. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Abe. Have a you great go. Thanksgiving. Enjoy. Thank Take you care, you my friend. And Merry Bye -bye. Christmas. Bye -bye. Merry Christmas. Well, we'll talk before that. <laughs> <laughs> Stop.